Hey, Cryptizens. Tonight's stories. Wi-Fi, KP3R, FTM, Crater. As Godfather of DeFi leaves DeFi. Ukraine buys military equipment with crypto. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time and the date is March 6, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm your host, Nick. The cover model for this podcast is Tex. And together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. We bring you new stories on familiar topics. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. Now, if you're new here and you find that you're liking this show, subscribe and rate us. If you're on Spotify, you can do that right from the app. Give Tex and I five stars. It'll help other people find their way to this podcast. Now, there's a lot to talk about, so let's go. Watch things for the next few weeks. They're already in motion. They've already using what's going on in Russia. They're going to use it as an excuse to start locking down crypto. The refrain right now is, oh my God, the oligarchs are using crypto to evade sanctions. And if that were true, that would be really distressing. But I don't see it that way. Now, we're going to talk about prices here in a bit. Crypto prices. And the global market cap is $1.7 trillion. How much do you think the Russian elite hold in value? I mean, how much do you think the oligarchs have? It's going to be more than $1.7 trillion. You know, that's true. So there's not enough liquidity, you know? Besides, what are they going to do with it? They still have to deal with sanctions. You know, these guys, a lot of them, they got personal sanctions. It's tough to evade those, really. Because it identifies those oligarchs as bad, bad people. So it's really hard to find people to feel sorry for them. So there just isn't enough on the crypto side of things to absorb their entire wealth. Now, sure, some of them are going to try it. I expect most of them to fail. And while Coinbase might not want to cut every Russian off from their system, if you can show one of these crypto addresses belong to a war criminal, they'd probably change their mind. I'm just guessing. So don't be fooled. Any measures that they introduce in the name of preventing Russian oligarchs from evading sanctions really have nothing to do with the Russian oligarchs. Keep an eye on them. Keep them honest. And before we get into tonight's stories, let's take a look at those prices. Like I said, the crypto market cap is $1.7 trillion. That's down 4.75% since yesterday. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin down 4.45%, Ethereum down 5.5%, Tether, Binance Coin down 4.91% and USDC. The global NFT market cap is just above $10 billion. The top five NFT collections by 24 hour volume on OpenSea are Cyber Brokers V3 down 58%, Dower Darcells up 74%, Let's Walk is even up on the day, VFriends down 8%, and Clonex down 27%. Keep in mind, some of these collections have really volatile prices, so do your own research. Wi Fi KP3R FTM Crater as the godfather of DeFi leaves DeFi. You're in finance, Keeper, and Phantom all tanked upon news that Andre Cogne and Anton Nell were leaving the DeFi space which is huge. Talented and influential developers are rare, and DeFi is losing two of them. The self-styled DeFi architect, Andre rose to prominence as the founder of Yearn Finance and Yield Optimization Protocol. Anton Nell is a builder best known for his work on the Phantom ecosystem. And this news came from Nell in a Sunday tweet. He said, quote, Andre and I have decided that we are closing the chapter of contributing to the DeFi crypto space and that it was, quote, a decision that has been coming for a while now. Anton and Andre worked closely together for a while, and so it's in that context that it was now that broke the news for the pair. He explained, quote, that the pair would be shutting down the websites that they control and stepping away from that space. Rumors started when Andre shut down his Twitter account. 
changed his link it in to show that he's no longer working on Yearn Finance or Phantom or Ethereum. Later, he let the Keeper community know he was leaving through a Telegram message. And he confirmed the news and stressed that the protocols, the systems that he and Nell built, would still work. Actually, they're deployed as smart contracts. So they're immutable. There's no way for them to be shut down. Cornelius said that they are simply transferring slash decommissioning the domains and web apps we control and moving away from DeFi slash crypto. He said that the pair would be returning to their careers in the TradFi space. Now, Banteg is a urine finance developer. And they tweeted out, quote, people burying Wi-Fi. Do you know Andre hasn't worked on it for over a year? And even if he did, there are 50 full-time people and 100 40 part-time contributors to back things up. It just kinds of to go, kind of goes to show, right? I mean, this pair had a huge impact on DeFi, from creating urine finance to building solid, uh, solid lane. They've had their impact, and it was felt in the markets. Urine finance is Wi-Fi down 7.5 percent. Keepers KP3R dropped to 24.4 percent. FTM is down 14.4. Solidly dropped 75%. Iron Bank, yeah, down 50%. And then there's these coins. Spooky Swap down 19%. Liquid Driver down 17%. Tomb is down 22%. Oh, and by the way, these guys had nothing to do with those projects, but they're down anyway, which really shows just how much of an influence that they've had. Ukraine buys military equipment with crypto. $15 million. That's how much Ukraine has spent so far. $15 million in donated crypto. And that's $15 million that buys supplies, including bulletproof vests. Those vests were delivered Friday. Hard to say what their distribution like is now once it's gotten to the hands of the army. It's pretty strained, I would guess. Alex Bornyakov is the Deputy Minister of Digital Transformation of Ukraine. During a Zoom interview on Friday, he said that Ukrainians expect to double the $50 million of donated crypto. They expect that to happen in the next two or three days. Most of these donations have been in Bitcoin and ETH. That said, they've also gotten donations in Tether, Polkadot, Solana, and hundreds of NFTs. And this was new to me. Hundreds of NFTs have been donated, including a crypto pump. So there's 250 people in this group and they've managed to find suppliers in Europe and the U.S. They can get everything from food to bandages and night vision goggles. 40% of their suppliers will take crypto. More than I expected, really. But maybe it's because, you know, it's such an unpopular position that Putin is in that everybody's going to fall over themselves to help Ukraine out any way they can. And if that means figuring out how to take crypto... It looks like for some of them, that means figuring out how to take crypto. So it's more than I expected, really. The rest of them are paid with fiat that was converted from crypto. Bornyakov said that while many companies and crypto startup founders have donated money, quote, most donations come from people. It's kind of a stretch for these guys, really. And think about this. Digital transformation of Ukraine. It was formed a couple of years ago, and it's got to focus on like developing Ukraine's IT services industry. They were working on hooking the country up to high-speed internet. You know, they, things like moving their government services online. Now, Bornyakov said, air raid sirens occasionally require him to run to a bomb shelter. I work in IT. I don't dodge bombs. His team is mostly under the age of 35. Most of them work remotely in and out of Ukraine. And now what they're working on is supporting the country's digital infrastructure as it's being attacked. It's imperative to make sure that the government's work is not interrupted. Gathering and using cryptocurrency donations has now become a part of the efforts as well. And that plan includes more than just crypto. Like I said, they're working with a couple of companies to design some NFTs. They want an NFT collection ready to go within a couple weeks. Now, the funds from the sale would go to supporting the war effort. But there are some things still up in the air, Bornyakov said. Quote, no one was ready to do military NFTs. 
The war just started eight days ago. They're still trying to figure out how to do things in terms of design. Now, right now, they're not selling their NFTs. They were donated CryptoPunk5364. And that one is a person in a blue bandana smoking a cigarette. They're not selling that one or any of the others that were donated, at least not immediately. By the way, that particular punk sold for 16.2 Ethereum about a year ago. Bornyakov said, quote, Yes, someone donated us a CryptoPunk, but it's so hard to sell. We haven't used it at this point. We're going to keep it for now. We appreciate every support that people are trying to give. What's important is people's awareness. They see what's going on and they're trying to help. We're going to work with NFTs a little bit later. We're focused on things we can deal with right now. There's no time to figure out how to convert them. Maybe once things settle down, we'll figure this out. Yeah, he does have a lot on his plate. And that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I really do appreciate it. So let me ask you this. Do you think the politicians are right? Should they be worried about Russian use of crypto? Do you think the oligarchs are going to be able to get their money out? Reach out and let us know. Send us an email at crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. That's crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. And hey, give crypto in five minutes to listen. We have 31 educational podcasts, five minutes to explain one concept in crypto. And as always, may peace.